Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is rip all the sheetrock off in this garage. Then I'm going to do the electrical, put the sheetrock back up, put the lights up, build a shelf across the back wall, and uh, run the air lines. Okay, I got pretty much everything out of here. A few things are real heavy. I just moved to the center of the room for now. Yeah, I got the sheetrock ripped off on uh, two of the walls, but it's, it's taken a long time to do that. And for the light switches, I was able to get a box that holds four uh, switches. And I took and cut the original bracket off of it and made these two brackets so it's real strong. And doesn't wiggle around at all. Yeah, and all of these 50 amp plug sockets, I'm making the brackets so it doesn't wiggle around at all in, in the wall. Yeah, I took and moved the 50 amp and the 20 amp plug out from the corner so it's a little easier to get to. Yeah, and I'm going to put one more plug socket in on the outside of the garage. And how I do that is I just hold the box up here, I mark around it, then I drill through it with a masonry bit and then cut it out with a jigsaw with one of those uh, blades on it that's got grit on it for cutting through stucco. Yeah, I got that uh, plug socket in. Here it is, a GFI. Yeah, I got a bunch of the boxes in. I always use these metal uh, boxes. I don't like the plastic ones because the screws strip out. And for the air compressor, I put in a 30 amp uh, plug in. And it's wired with 10 gauge wire. But it's only going to have a 20 amp breaker on it. And I made this adapter up so that I could plug it in. And the, the reason I did that is just so that if I get a bigger air compressor, I don't, all I have to do is just change the circuit breaker. And it's also going to be wired to a 30 amp double pole uh, light switch here, so I can turn it on and off right here. Yeah, I got the other uh, ground wire in here. Yeah, it wasn't easy to run that 4 gauge uh, copper wire through there. And I also got the air compressors completely hooked up now. Yeah, and uh, 250 feet of this 12-2 Romex at Love's is $65. The 100 foot rolls, they want 48 so it's a lot better deal. And I never uh, use a 14 gauge wire for anything. It, it just better spend the extra money and do this. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to buy more of the 6.3 uh, wire. Yeah, I only had enough to go to one of the plug sockets. Yeah, I got all the light switches hooked up and changed over. And this was just hooked up temporary this way for these two uh, lights, just so I can see. And before I started doing this, I figured out where everything's going to go at. I also figured out how I'm going to wire it. So that uh, every other plug socket will be on a different circuit breaker. Then you can plug uh, two things in the two closest plug sockets that are 15 amps or so and it won't pop the breakers. Yeah, I got one third of the plug sockets wired and I've removed all the original uh, boxes. And this one for the air conditioning, I'm going to move it down lower. Oh, I put these two up high because I'm going to put that small uh, welding table right in front of here and then I'll be able to still get to them. Yeah, I got the second set of uh, plug sockets all hooked up. And the reason I, in three places I put two plug sockets together, I just needed more room in the box to be able to hook everything up. Yeah, I got all of the 110 volt uh, plug sockets wired except this one. I'm going to run some kind of box on the outside out here, so when I replace the shed I can put lights in it real easy and hook it up. Yeah, so what I did was drill the hole through the stucco and I mounted this 4x6 in here. And I screwed one of these outdoor electrical boxes to it so I can hook power up to the shed later. Yeah, I got all the plug sockets hooked up now. There was too much of a voltage drop, so I rewired them all where each wall's on a separate breaker now. Yeah, I got two more of the 50 amp uh, plug sockets and and when you do this you should leave the wire real long inside the wall because there's so little room inside the box you have to cut the wires off real short so if you ever have to replace the plug you're going to have to loosen these uh, two screws up and slide the wire down a little bit. Yeah there was a light here on the outside and what I'm going to do is remove this box 
taken, uh, put a two by six here in the wall with screen on the other side where it's bulging out through the hole and patched the stucco. Yeah, so this is what I've done, and then I'm going to mount this in the wall behind that and stucco over it. Okay, so I got that hole uh, fixed. So there's one more of these Bakelite boxes I think I'm going to replace. It's on that light. It sticks out too far from the stucco where the gasket doesn't seal. Yes, yeah, so this is the box with the flood, flood light on the front of the uh, garage. I just welded a piece of the angle iron to it to make it work. Yeah, I got the light done. That's a lot better now. It fits up against the wall tight. Yeah, so now I'm hooking up the rest of these 50 amp sockets. It is a bit, bit difficult to run this 6.3 uh, wire. Yeah, so pretty much all the electrical work's done. All the 50 amp plugs are in. Only thing I got left to do is hook the uh, two boxes up for the lights, which I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put them yet. And that's what this wire is. It's rolled up here. And the reason I put in five uh, 50 amp plugs is I'm going to leave my TIG welder plugged in all the time. And then I'm going to probably get a, a milling machine and a CNC plasma cutter table, and those will be plugged in all the time. And I'll have two left over for my big MIG welder and regular uh, uh, plasma cutter. Okay, so I got all the pieces in there where the sheetrock is going to be in there good this time. And I'm only going to sheetrock up to the first uh, rafter for now because I'm going to build a shelf that's going to come down. There's going to be supports coming down from here, and I don't know where exactly they're going to be at yet. And I'm also going to sheetrock the back wall and a little bit of each side. Yeah, I got the ceiling sheetrocked, and the insulation is back in there. So now I'm going to start working on this back wall. Yeah, I had to take the sheetrock back off. I forgot to put that piece in there that the shelf's going to mount to. Okay, so I got this much of it taped and mudded. So now I have to wait until tomorrow and then I can paint this much of it and build a shelf. But I think I'm going to start working on building the shelf right now. So here's the frame, uh, one half of the shelf. So there's going to be two of these screwed together because it's 17 feet 5 inches all the way to the wall. Yeah, I got the back wall all painted. So now as soon as this dries, I can start putting the shelf up. So I got uh, one half of the shelves up there. And I got the rest of the pieces cut out. I'm going to paint it and then tomorrow I'll put those up. And I ended up, I had to cut some small holes in the wall to see exactly where the 2x4 is. So I screw it in the middle of it. And I just patch those. Yeah, I got the shelf completely done now. And I also put uh, sheetrock up on some of those. Yeah, I just got this 13-inch uh, uh, South Bend lathe, and I'll be making a video on it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to replace the motor because it's three phase, and there's a few other things I want to do. Yeah, it was pretty heavy to get this off the trailer. Yeah, I got a whole bunch more of the sheetrock on here. Yeah, and that corner over by the door is going to be done last. After I get the ceiling done and everything, because I have to do something with the airlines here. Yeah, I just got the corner piece in here, and I've got the stuff in the corner over on the other side done. Yeah, I just got this piece done. Yeah, I got all the walls sheetrocked and the trim back on. So now I guess it's time to start working on the ceiling. Yeah, I got a little more done. I got all the electrical boxes for the lights up there and all the pieces that the lights are going to mount to. And for the attic door, I put 4x4s across here so that I'd have something better to screw it into. Yeah, so now I'm going to try to put the sheetrock on the ceiling. I just made this thing to hold it up there and then I'll stick stuff under it to raise it up high enough. 
Yeah, that actually worked to get this first piece up here. Now I've got uh, nine more to go. Yeah, I got uh, four pieces of sheetrock up on the ceiling. Only uh, six more to go. Yeah, I got uh, seven pieces of sheetrock on now. You know, there's three more to go, and I've been putting the insulation back in as I go. Yeah, I got all of the sheetrock up on the ceiling now. So now I just got to wait for this mud to dry and then paint it and then put the lights up. Well, I got it all painted, and tomorrow I'm going to put up the uh, lights. Yeah, I got the lights up. And before I put the sheetrock up, I wrote down where each light's going to go. And then I also marked the inside of the lights so that I'd know where the screws go. And I mounted the electrical boxes about a foot away and just ran BX cable to it because it was much easier than trying to get those boxes in the right spot. Yeah, I got all my uh, hose and uh, cord hangers up, the fire extinguishers, and the thermometer. So about all there is left to do is to run the airlines and uh, sheetrock this one corner. Yeah, I also took this attic door and I made a frame around it on the inside and put insulation on it. And I put a total of uh, 64 feet more of insulation in the in the ceiling because it didn't ha it wasn't done right originally. Yeah, I also took on this shelf and made a little uh, border up here, just in case there's an earthquake, nothing slides up. Yeah, so I'm just starting to do the airlines, and it's going to have quick couplers on the outside of the garage and some on the inside. And I need to space that away from the plug socket, so I screwed these two by fours in here. Yeah, then to drill through the stucco, you use one of these uh, hole saws that got like grit on it. Yeah, I got the two pieces in that go through the wall because there's going to be two quick couplers on the outside. And then this piece is going to go on there. So there's going to be two quick couplers on the inside. And there'll be a quarter inch uh, ball valve on the bottom to drain the water. Yeah, and that's what it'll look like when it's on there. Yeah, I, I can't solder it yet until I put the sheetrock back up. But the two, uh, I got these angled a little bit to give more clearance for the door. Because the door is right here. So now what I'm doing is making the water trap. And I went with inch and a half pipe here. I was going to go two inch, but two inch pipe costs three times as much. But by going much bigger pipe, the air is going through here a lot slower so that you won't get as much water coming out of the lines. Because this garage does get a lot more water coming out of it because of the uh, line goes underground. Yeah, I got that wall sheet rocked now. Yeah, I got the water trap all soldered together. And at this end, there'll be two quarter inch ball valves. And there's going to be pieces running across here, a flat bar. And that's how it'll mount to the wall. But I don't have the little straps yet. Yeah, so here's what it looks like on the wall here. And the air is going to come in this line, and it's going to go out on the, the top. And I made these brackets down here, and then I drilled it and tapped it and put those screws in. And I also always solder the uh, straps to it. I haven't got the inch and a half straps yet, which I should have tomorrow. And I also have the drain uh, quarter inch ball valves that are going to go on the bottom. Yeah, and I just got these drain valves. And these are DeWalt drain valves. But I ordered them from a place called ereplacementparts.com because it's much faster to get them that way. And I also got these inch and a half straps. They sell the pipe and the fittings at Home Depot and Lowe's, but they don't sell the straps. I had to go to a plumbing supply place for those. And each one of these metal brackets, I marked it with a center punch so when I get this whole thing together, I can take it back apart and paint those, and I'll be able to put them back in the same places. Okay, so I got the water trap finished. So now I'm going to take it apart and paint those brackets.
and I got a little more done. I got that piece soldered on there. And I got the water trap uh, mounted on there. And I used soft copper pipe at the top so I could bend it in towards the wall. Yeah, I got a little bit more done. I got the sheet rock on this wall and that pipe ran a little ways. Yeah, I got a little bit more done. And right there where that 90 is, that's going to run over to that other air compressor that's got to go in before the water trap. And up there, there's going to be a T on it and it's going to run down to this line. And then it's going to run around here and there's going to be two more uh, quick couplers. Yeah, and when I have to solder something that's right next to the wall, I put a piece of sheet metal in there. And I always run the big and the small uh, quick couplers because the, the three quarter and one inch drive impact uses the big air hose. Yeah, I got a little more done. Yeah, I probably have more copper pipe in this garage than any garage out there. And I had this hose made uh, that goes to the air compressor from a place uh, that sells bearings. Yeah, and this line here that I have capped off, it's going to go to a valve and a, a motor guard filter. So when I get a CNC plasma cutter table, it's ready to be hooked up. Yeah, I got the rest of the trim back on and the cover on the sub panel. And this board here, that's just so the uh, doorknob doesn't go through the wall. Yeah, I got the quick couplers on over here now. Next, it's going to run around and over here, and it's going to come out just on this other side of this welding table, and that's it. Yeah, and I take and spray all these fittings with uh, soap and water to see if there's any leaks, and I found two little leaks, and the other one's over here. Just right at that uh, drain valve. Well, the garage is pretty much done. Yeah, I just got, I got ordered that uh, motor guard filter to put on that one line and then I got to move some stuff in here. And I put the lathe in here just to fix everything that's wrong with it and buy the stuff for it. Then I'm going to move it into the other uh, garage. Yeah, I just got this uh, motor guard uh, filter and I'm starting to make the bracket to attach it to the wall. These filters have a roll of toilet paper on the inside. So every time you change the filter, you can always take the old uh, roll on the bathroom and use it. Yeah, and I got this bracket all made to hold this uh, motor guard filter. And I just used uh, two inch by three inch pieces of uh, tube to, to mount that to and then drilled it and tapped it. Yes, yeah, so I got this motor guard uh, filter mounted to the wall and I put a union at this end just so I can take it apart if I ever have to. So now I just got to hook this line up. Yeah, I got the motor guard uh, filter done. Yeah, and in this other garage I also put a 30 amp uh, double pole light switch in for the air compressor. And that other air compressor back there, I've always had a light switch in it for, for it, and it's only a 110 volt one. And with all three of them together, I should get a, a 27 CFM at 90 pounds out of it. Yeah, this is the first time ever I've gotten two of my cars into one garage. Yeah, I made a thing where I can put my extra argon CO2 tank and it can't get knocked over. And I moved some of the stuff around. Yeah, I still got to move these two cabinets into the other garage. Yeah, I got the garage finished. Got those cabinets in here. Now, a lot of this stuff won't be in here once I get a 20 foot shipping container. Yeah, it filled up real fast.